Hey guys, it's me, Angela Walters, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I quilted a bear of a quilt for Tula Pink. I'll show you my hack for using matching thread color and why I love quilting chunky feathers so very much. Let's get to it. In this week's video, I'm bringing you along with me as I tackle a quilt that I quilted for Tula Pink. Now, when she pieced this beautiful quilt, she used the quilt pattern Bjorn Bear from Elizabeth Hartman. Isn't it adorable? I knew that once I started quilting it, it was gonna be a blast. I know I wanted to show off the pattern. I wanted to not overwhelm the fabric, but I wanted to have a great time quilting. All I have to do now is get it loaded, pick out my thread, and get to quilting. So the time has come to pick the thread colors, and I have the perfect color. What says Tula Pink better than a hot pink gorgeous thread? I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to go with my go-to color, a light yellow. It should blend in over most of the bears, although I probably will have to change colors once in a while. I think it's time to get this thing quilted. When I get started, I don't normally have a plan for the whole quilt. I usually know one or two things I want to do, then I get started. For this quilt, I know I want to do something really fun around the outside of the quilt with feathers, which you'll have to wait until the end to see. I'm not sure about the bear blocks yet, but I'm sure I'll figure out what to do when I get there. For the background, I think I'll quilt some leaves. Oh, I'll do some leaves with pebbles. This is for Tula, of course. I'll probably quilt a flower or two. And because I'm a swirl girl, some elongated swirls. Well, I have one and a half rows done of the whole quilt, so that means I'm not very close to finishing, but I wanted to show you what I've been doing. I finally figured out what to do with the bear blocks. I decided to add some texture with wavy lines and then some geometric quilting for the nose. Let me show you how easy it is. First, I'm gonna add an echo line inside the space. This is just to make it a little smaller. I don't wanna leave such a big area unquilted. I'm stopping halfway because I wanna add that little triangle detail for the nose while I'm there. It's actually a dot to dot technique. And what I love is it just adds a little bit of detail without adding too much. I didn't wanna make it too fussy in here because I wanted the texture to show up. Now I can continue on quilting. What I'm using is this mini ruler and it's gonna help me deal with all these little tiny seams. Now I'm gonna stitch in the ditch around the nose and add the little triangle detail in there as well. Just a nice geometric shape, just to not add too much detail in here. And since I can use the same thread color, I'm gonna go right into quilting those wavy lines. I didn't wanna quilt something so literal as hair, but I thought the wavy lines would add a nice texture and kinda of give it that furry, berry kind of look. This is actually the wavy, wavy design for my book shape by shape quilting. The main difference is that I'm just kind of working it in a different direction around the face of the block. Since the nose of the bear is so lightly quilted and the background is so heavily quilted, I'm aiming for a density that's somewhere in between those two for the faces of the bear. An added bonus of this design is that it doesn't take away from this beautiful fabric in the background. Now how cute is this finished bear? We're gonna call him Barry. <laughs> I love how the quilting adds detail without being overly realistic. Now you might be wondering about that feather in the background. I'm so glad you asked. I'll tell you about that in just a moment. But first, I wanna talk a little bit more about thread color. When the two colors of the bear are close enough, I can use the same thread color in both. But that's not always the case in this quilt. Now you might be wondering what these bears did so wrong to get pins in their heads. Well, the thing is they're actually gonna need a different thread color. And since I'm gonna come back and quilt those at a later time, I go ahead and put some pins in there to pin baste it. Since they're parallel to my roller bar, they're gonna roll up in there nicely. And when I come back, they'll be ready for quilting. The extra work of changing thread color is so worth it. Above all, I don't want the quilting to overwhelm these beautiful blocks. I had to show you one of my favorite things about my quilting room. It's actually that window. When I'm working with a thread color that matches the quilt top, having a side light will help me see the quilting. 
let me show you what I'm talking about. What's happening is that light on the side is giving me a nice shadow so that when I'm quilting, I can see where I've been. It's awfully hard to do these little teeny pebbles when I can't see where I'm going. This is with the lights on, and that's with the lights off. Next time you're trying to quilt with matching thread, use a side light so you can see the shadows. Now that I've figured out how to quilt the bears, let's talk about one of my favorite parts of this quilt, the feather. What I'm doing is quilting the feather so that it looks like it's going behind the faces of the bears. Now this is something I love doing because it really adds a look of depth to the quilt and helps me quilt borders that aren't quite big enough to do a true feather. By making it run off the side and go behind the bear, I can still quilt that nice oversized feather and my hope is that it will frame the whole quilt. Now that I've quilted one side of the feather, I'm gonna fill in around it. And of course, you know I love pebbles, but I don't like doing them a whole lot. So I'm gonna quilt a couple rows of pebbles around the feather and then add some swirls. Now that I'm done filling in that side of the feather, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. This is actually one of my favorite kinds of feathers to quilt. It's such an elegant looking feather. I'm actually not gonna bring it all the way to the edge because I might hook it into another feather later. So when you see me quilting it, it might look like it's partially undone, but just know that eventually it'll hook into each other. If you want to learn how to quilt this feather, as well as other feather techniques, I actually have a class on Craftsy where I show you how to quilt several kinds of feathers. And a little filler around it is just what I need to make it pop. This is looking amazing. I can't wait to show you what the rest of these gorgeous feathers look like. Hang around to the end of the video for the reveal of the whole quilt. Plus, I'll tell you the real reason why I quilt feathers like this. So now that I've got my quilting designs all figured out, all that's left to do is to continue working my way down the quilt, alternating between the feathers, the fillers, and the blocks. Have I mentioned how much I love machine quilting? I'm in the home stretch. One last little bit to fill in and then I'll finally be done with this quilt. And I finished the quilts, woohoo! So what has 20 bears, a ton of feathers, and a crap ton of quilting? This quilt. My absolute favorite part of quilting is getting to take it off of the quilting machine and seeing it in its entirety for the first time. That is something that will never get old. Even though I was a little bit nervous about quilting the bears' faces in the beginning, I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Who would have thought that a simple design like a wavy line would look so great? Plus, I love how some of the bears have a little bit of personality, like this grumpy bear right here. And even though the fabric has a beautiful texture, it doesn't take away from those gorgeous fabrics of Tula's. And I know I'm easily amused, but I am loving the feather wrapping around the outside of the quilt, going behind the bears, adding a look of depth to the quilt. So have you figured out why I like to quilt it this way? Of course I think it looks cool, but doing it this way also allows me to break the feather up into chunks. Breaking it into smaller pieces allows me to quilt the feather as I advance down the quilt instead of coming back and doing it all at once. That makes it quick to quilt and stunning, which we call that in quilting a win-win. I happen to know for a fact that Tula Pink loves the quilt, so I'm so excited with how it turned out. Now, if you are a big Tula Pink fan, and let's face it, who isn't a huge fan of Tula's, you can find all the information about this quilt in the description box below. All you have to do is scroll down and click that little arrow, and you'll see all the information about the pattern, as well as a kit I've put together for you. That's right, I put together a Bjorn Bear quilt kit for you as well, and it's really cute, so you'll have to scroll down and find all the information about that. Well, thank you so much for watching. I would love for you to leave a comment and let me know what did you think about the quilting? Are you a chunky feather kind of person or would you have kept it a little bit more simple? And I'll be back next week with another video, so tune in then. Until then, happy quilting!